Welcome to episode four of Essex County College's Virtual Cafe. Today is Thursday, April 16th, 2020, and we are going to be taking you on a virtual field trip to the Seattle Aquarium. Say hey to Miss Hunt. What up, Miss Hunt? Howdy, howdy. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well, feeling good, eating healthy, and staying in good spirits. Amen to that. All right, so without further ado, just keep in mind that me and Miss Hunt are taking this field trip with you, so you're going to see our heads on the screen, and we are going to talk through as many parts as we can, just like we were there in real life. Because that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to your virtual field trip at the Seattle Aquarium. My name is Heidi, and today your dive buddy is diver KB. And she has on a very special mask that is going to allow her to be able to talk to you from underwater. Wow. That's right. This wow. is called a full face mask. And as you can see, that means it covers my eyes, nose, and mouth. So I can breathe and talk, just like if I were standing next to Heidi out there. Now, that microphone that she's speaking of is right inside, and you can see, I'll bring this a little bit closer. You can bring this you can a little bit closer red. thing right inside the mask. That is the microphone that allows her voice to actually come over the house speakers here at the Sale Aquarium and allows you to hear her as well. That's right. And it's plugged into our computer sound system so that you can hear me in your classrooms. And of course, it works in reverse, too. So anything Heidi says into her microphone comes back to the speakers over my ears. And that's how we're able to all communicate with each other. Now, Katie's mask, as well as all of her dive gear, is important to be able to explore the underwater environment. And uh, where is it that you are exploring today, Katie? Well, today I am exploring the window on Washington waters exhibit here at the Seattle Aquarium, which represents the ecosystem that you would find out on Washington State's outer coast, specifically in a place on the very northwestern corner of Washington State, an area called Nia Bay. Now, uh, Nia Bay, of course, is in Washington State, but you guys are not in Washington State. Washington State, excuse me. So how about we check in with everybody, make sure everyone can hear us all right. We'll start with Ace Academy. Why don't you guys give us a big wave and a hello. Hi. What up? That's awesome. That's good. Okay. So the Nia Bay Air Habitat that you're looking at here, this is an ecosystem. And an ecosystem is, of course, a living and non-living things that are all working together from the animals that you'll see in this exhibit to the rocky cliffs that are right behind us. And that even includes the water. All of the water in this exhibit is being pumped in from Puget Sound. That's a body of water that is right outside of the Seattle Aquarium. Now, there is 120,000 gallons of seawater that's being pumped in. It rotates through the exhibit at 1,600 gallons per minute, and it's all local water for those local animals. And what is the underwater weather report today, Katie? Let me check my dive computer, Heidi. It says, ooh, it's about 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, about a hundred percent humidity <laughs> and I would call it partly cloudy today. Now, partly cloudy, that's because our water here is filled with plankton. It is rich with that plankton. Now, plankton can be plants or animals, or I should say algae or animals. Now, uh, you want to give us a little bit more expla explanation on the, the plankton? Yes, well, plankton, plankton is SpongeBob's is sort buddy. of the base of the exactly that is the about. food web, of course, is the way that oh, all the organisms are connected based on what they eat. So the plankton are the the smallest, the drifting microscopic animals and algae in the ocean. And the algae plankton are the ones that make our water here in Washington State look a little green sometimes. Now, not all algae is microscopic. There are some algae that are very big. And as a matter of fact, we have two examples of that right here. Uh, on, on the right, we have some giant kelp, and we can see a stalk with leaves that are extended through the entire stalk. And a lot of animals will hide amongst those leaves. And some great examples of that are uh, this 
this fish that's coming into view right here, this is one of our canary rockfish, that orange with the white stripe. And they right might hide amongst right those right leaves. They might also stick their <laughs> pectoral fins out and perch on them as a place to rest. You can see that the shape of the fish's body is really similar to the shape of the leaves on the kelp. So it helps them to blend in very well. And of course, there's a second type of kelp right here called bull kelp. And this is another common type here in the waters of Washington State. It has one long straight stalk with a float at the top filled with gas to help keep the leaves or blades spread out along the surface of the water so they form a shady canopy. It could be a hiding place for fish that live near the surface. Now, some fish that live near the surface here in Washington are salmon, the most iconic fish of the Pacific Northwest. Iconic. A lot of people like to eat them, a lot of bears, eagles, seals. They are an important food source for a lot of animals. That means they have a lot of predators and they need to have a place to hide. And they'll use that bull kelp, that canopy, as a safe hideaway or a safe highway as they go from the freshwater streams out to the open ocean and then all the way back again. Exactly. But of course, the kelp is important to some animals, not just as a hiding place, but also as a food source. And Heidi, I think I see one of those herbivores or plant-eating animals over here. All right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Now, what kind of animal is this, Katie? This is called a sea urchin. And sea urchins have five little teeth on the underside of their body five that they use teeth. to eat their favorite mm -hmm. food, which is kelp. In fact, when you have enough sea urchins in one place and not enough predators to keep them in check, they can mow down an entire kelp forest. Now, the spines that you see all over their body, uh, those spines, they use them much like we might use our fingers or chopsticks to be able to grab onto food. And they'll take that food, that kelp or seaweed, and pass it right to the bottom where those five teeth are that Katie mentioned. Now, of course, if they're an herbivore, and Katie mentioned we need to have predators of all animals, uh, we need to have carnivores in there as well. And do we happen to have any predators of sea urchins in this exhibit? As a matter of fact, we do. And I know where they usually hide, so I'm going to go take a look and see if I can find some to show you with my dive camp. Yep. <laughs> all right. And while she is swimming over, Brave. I'm going to talk a little bit about those predators. They're called wolf eels, and we'll start off by showing you a really cool example example of a wolf eel skull and you can see right here in the very front is that a good angle? All right. In the very front, they've got big, sharp canine teeth that allow them to be able to tear through soft-bodied animals like squid and fish, but then on the inside, they have, I don't know if we can really get a good look, we'll bring it a little bit closer, you can see on the upper and lower jaw, they have molars, much like we do, that allow them to be able to chew up their food and chew through those shells, the spines of sea urchins, as well as uh, clams and even crabs. Heidi, I think I've got a good shot of some wolf eels right. here. Excellent. We'll go to Katie. Oh, man. Oh. We have two wolf eels in this shot. You want to give some introductions? How about bring your camera down just a little bit, Katie? There we go. All right. Well, you can see two wolf eels here. And the larger of the two, with the lighter colored head and the kind of squishy, wiggly looking lips, is the male. And the smaller, with the darker coloration, is the female. And these two are a mated pair sharing a den. Now, uh, some wolf eels are going to bond for a season where they'll den up in that cave together, and then others will actually den up for a lifetime. But one thing that's really cool about wolf eels is that whether it's a season or a lifetime, they both work together to take care of the eggs that they are protecting. So while one is guarding them, the other one goes out around and explores for food, and then they come back and trade places. All right. Looks like we're uh, Katie's almost on her way back. Now, the Be wolf careful, eels Katie. are carnivores, as we mentioned. But, uh, of course, after a carnivore eats from, uh, and brain. eats a big meal, what <laughs> then happens, Katie? Well, I think everybody knows. After you eat, you produce waste. And in the ocean, oh, all of that waste falls down to the seafloor. 
And there are a group of animals called detritivores that help to clean up all of that waste. So and we've got plenty of detritivores around here. That's right. We are. keep these and in many of our exhibits to help us keep, this, keep our exhibits clean, much like they would do out in the ocean. Now, Katie has a great example of that right down at the Katie bottom. Sounds like Darth uh, Vader this all is that one breathing. of our sea cucumbers. It's called a giant sea cucumber. And what are we looking at there, Katie? You are looking at the sea cucumber as it crawls along the sea floor, and what it's doing is acting like a living vacuum cleaner. It mops up all of the detritus, all that organic waste, including fish, it to the me. Bottom, I mean, and it eats yeah, it. In bad shape. <laughs> what comes out the other end is mostly sand and I recycled that nutrients that can be used by other animals bag. and plants. <laughs> Now, as I mentioned, they're helping us to keep our exhibits clean, uh, just like they would out in the wild. And their job is very important to keep this entire ecosystem clean, keeping their home clean. And because we are connected to the ocean as well, we also have an important job in taking care of that and keeping it clean, much like any habitat that we're around. Now, Katie, what's one of your favorite things that you like to do when uh, to keep the ocean clean? Well, Heidi, I don't really like to eat detritus like the sea cucumber. So instead, I try to pick up trash when I see it, and also to put my trash in the right container, whether that's the garbage can or the recycle bin or the compost container. That's right. All of those things are very important, making sure that litter doesn't make its way to the ground to begin with. But when we do find it, we can clean it up. You can organize little cleanup sessions around your schools, around your house, your apartment building. And another important thing is just to invite, tell your friends about it, invite them to help out so you can keep your whole ecosystem clean as well. Exactly. We're all, right. all connected to the ocean and we can all lend a helping hand. Absolutely. Nice. So Katie, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I think we've got time to take some questions from the students. Uh, if we are ready to go. Okay, sounds good to me. There we go. How about we start with Ace Charter. Do, uh, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, why are you breathing so hard? Mm. I'm really getting my air through that yellow hose that you can see going up to the surface behind me. And it's connected to a great big set of tanks up at the top that have enough air for me to stay underwater pretty much as long as I could possibly want. We have lots of different species of detritivores and scavengers that feed at the bottom of the ocean, including sea cucumbers, lots of different kinds of crabs, snails, sea stars, and many, many more. Absolutely. In the case of the sea urchins, when there are too many, they tend to eat all of the kelp. And if there isn't any kelp around, then there isn't a home or hiding place for all of these other animals. That's why it's so important to have a healthy balance of predators and prey in any type of ecosystem. Now, there are other animals that eat kelp, and a great example of that is the kelp crab that can also be found here in our Washington waters that would also benefit from that. We'll start with Katie. What, what was the reason that brought you to want to work in an aquarium? You know, I have always loved the ocean ever since I was really little, and I wanted to be a scuba diver since I was really little too, but I had to wait until I was 14. And then after I learned how to scuba dive, I thought it would be so cool to be able to explore the ocean and learn about these cool animals and help teach everyone else. So that's why I decided I wanted to work in an aquarium. Now, for myself, I grew up in the environment. My dad was a scuba diver, and he also worked at a zoo and aquarium uh, in Tacoma, Washington. So I grew up in this environment. It was more of a natural uh, process for me. I just grew up in, and wanting to be have some sort of involvement in it. And how can you not love all of these amazing animals in this beautiful environment that they live in? How many wolf fields do we have in our aquarium? In this window on Washington Waters exhibit, we have four wolf eels. We have two males and a female, and one that is a juvenile, a young wolf eel. And we're still waiting to see whether it's a male or a female, because it's very hard to tell when they're so young. That's right. Now, as they grow older, as the male grows older, that's when they get those big, jolly, squishy lips and a very large forehead. It makes it a lot easier, easier to be able to tell. 
Now, we do have wolf eels in other exhibits. We have, I believe, five in our underwater dome and a juvenile in another exhibit. So looks like we've probably got between eight and ten total. Sounds about right. They're a very cool animal that we have right here in our local waters in Washington State. And I think we're pretty lucky to have so many here at our aquarium, too. Absolutely. A lot of scuba divers love to have encounters with them. They often consider them to be puppy dogs of the ocean, even though they have those great big teeth. Are there any dangerous species of animals? Well, we can talk about the aquarium first and maybe mention something that might be out in the wild as well. Actually, I think it could be found in both places. Sorry, was that dangerous or endangered? Uh, I believe it was dangerous, right? Well, there are some animals in here that definitely have the ability to defend themselves if they feel threatened. But there are no animals in here that I would think of as aggressive or that I'm really scared of. But some fish, like the rockfish, have spines on their dorsal fin on their back that are very sharp and have a little bit of venom in them, and that helps to protect the fish from predators. But it could also injure my hand if I got a little bit too close and touched that spine. That's right. Now, here at the Seattle Aquarium, we have one species of shark, and it's called the Pacific Spiny Dogfish. However, that is not the fish that our divers are afraid of, and I shouldn't even use the term afraid. It's more that they're waiting to be ran into by one of our very fast swimming salmon as they're doing broadcast feedings, and those salmon are just swimming straight to that food and sometimes run into the divers in the process. They get so distracted by the food that they're not paying attention to anything else. That's why it's important for me to stay out of their way so they don't bump into me by mistake. All right, so octopus have a really wide variety of food that they eat, and it can be pretty much anything that's in their environment. They'll eat crabs, clams, uh, fish, squid, and even other octopus. And they do that with a very special uh, mouth. And what's inside of their mouth is called a beak. And it looks much like a parrot's beak. And they use it to be able to bite and tear into the, uh, the food that they like to eat. And it's so strong, they can even crush through shells, too. Now, where they're finding all that food is on the bottom of the ocean, though. Yep. Most of their food is found down on the seafloor or down low in the water. And an octopus also likes to stay down near the seafloor because of camouflage. You may have heard that an octopus can change the color and the texture of its skin in order to blend in with its surroundings. And staying down on the seafloor where there are lots of rocks and gravel and seaweed to blend in with helps them to hide. They also like to hide inside of a den, which is usually a cave or a crevice in the rocks or under a pile of sunken logs. There are lots of places they might like to hide, usually right down at the bottom. There are different types of ecosystems in the ocean. You can look at one small area as an ecosystem. For example, a kelp forest ecosystem like we've been talking about here in our window on Washington Waters exhibit. You might also talk about a coral reef ecosystem, or an open ocean ecosystem, or a deep sea ecosystem. But you can also talk about the ocean as one great big ecosystem, all working together. I have never eaten sea cucumber. Uh, have you ever eaten it, Katie? You know, I have tried eating sea cucumber, but I have to say that it wasn't really my favorite thing to eat. <laughs> I do enjoy some types of seafood, but I like to be very careful about what type of seafood I eat so that I know I'm choosing something that's healthy for me and also healthy for the ecosystem out in the ocean. Now, there are people who do eat sea cucumber, though, and happen to like it a lot. Now, they, a lot of people also like to eat the cousin of the sea cucumber, which is that urchin that you guys saw earlier. <laughs> I'm going to pass off the really hard question to Katie. <laughs> How many species of fish are in the whole world? Yes, in the whole world. Oh, my gosh. I think you might have stumped the diver on that one. I am not sure exactly how many species of fish are in the whole world. A lot. I do know how many are in this exhibit, and it's about 20. And there are hundreds of species in our local waters here in Washington State, and even more than that throughout the world. But I don't know the exact number. 
you have ones that are found in saltwater environments, then you also have ones that are found in a freshwater environment, and then others that can go back and forth or uh, in either area. He would like to know why scuba divers go into our exhibits. Oh, well, partly because it's a lot of fun. But here at the aquarium, scuba divers also have some really important jobs to do. We help to take care of the animals and the exhibits they live in. So a lot of what we do is basically like underwater chores, scrubbing the rocks, washing the windows, and vacuuming fish goop from the gravel. But we also have jobs that are more fun, like feeding the fish. Of course, all those chores are much funner if they're underwater. And uh, one of those chores that she mentioned was cleaning the window. And Katie and I will give each other a high five. High now, five. I know that's probably hard for you guys to see this from there, but our hands are actually 12 and a half inches apart. And that is because this great big window is that thick. And why does it have to be that thick, Katie? That is so that it can hold back all 120 thousand gallons of water in this exhibit without springing a leak. And that water weighs probably around one million pounds or more. Wow. And all that weight against that window is why it's got to be that thick. How many food chains, we'll, we'll say how many food webs are found in this environment? You know, that is sort of a tricky question if you're thinking about the whole ocean because really everything is connected together in one giant food web. But you can break it down into smaller food webs to make it a little easier to understand. You might see a food web that covers Puget Sound, the body of water right outside the Seattle Aquarium. You might talk about a food web of the Pacific Ocean. You might even talk about a food web of the entire ocean. It's really all connected together, really. And we are also connected to that food web. So even whether it is just this environment here or it is connected to the entire ocean. Uh, it looks like we are out of time right now. But let's give a great big uh, round of applause for Diver Katie. And, of course, all of our students for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much for going on our virtual field trip of the Seattle Aquarium. That was pretty cool. All right. So that was a bunch of fun, um, huh? I like it. I liked it. I, I told you the uh, the 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 oh, what are they called? Um, I don't know because they're they they remind me of the the characters from the Little Mermaid, Poopsie and Doopsie, uh, Ursula's. That's yep. who that was. Oh man, no, but I'm never ever eating a sea cucumber. You can, I'm definitely gonna pass on that one. I mean, I like seafood and all, but I'm I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Definitely gonna pass on the sea cucumber. Anybody else? <laughs> I would like to touch sea urchin. I think I did once, but I would like to touch sea urchin. They look pretty cool to touch. That other thing with those teeth and all of that, and you can keep that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stay away from him. That was fun. I, I, I enjoyed watching the children. I think that's why I chose. More so than even the, the tour. I missed the, front, the beginning of the tour, obviously. Um, but the kids were really cute. I enjoyed I th that. I think that's why I chose it. <laughs> they, they added a little something to the day. Yeah. yeah, and it could be an escape, an escape with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. I said, out of the mouth of babes. Yeah. All right, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to episode four of Essex County College Virtual Cafe. We took a trip to the Seattle Aquarium. We hope you all enjoyed it. And if you didn't, you can enjoy it on the replay on our YouTube page. Um, we have a program coming up tomorrow with Miss Hunt called What Are You Watching? And we just want to remind you today that President Monroe of Essex County College has a state of the college address scheduled for 2.30 p.m. The Zoom login is in, information is in your email. All students receive this. All staff receive this. So we look forward to seeing you there for the presidential address today, the 16th at 2.30 p.m. Thank you again, and we will see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Art and Hunt. Got it. Art and Hunt show. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the Easter egg for after the credits of this episode. That's, that's <laughs> definitely <laughs> in the bloopers. <laughs> Peace.
Peace. Peace. Later.